हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज फिफ्थ ऑफ मे एंड आई वेलकम यू टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन सो गाइस लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द टुडे सेशन इन द टुडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर ऑल द आर्टिकल्स विद द बैकग्राउंड एज वेल एज द कंसेप्चुअल आस्पेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन दिस सेशन नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस सेशन फ्रॉम आर टेलीग्राम चैनल लिंक फॉर द टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब नाउ uh one um, one more thing that before starting we will take the overview of entire newspaper so that you can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper now starting up so guys the first article many guild in rights in manipur government issues shoot at site order so we will see that what is this clash that has happened in manipur which largely happens to be a ethnic clash okay so we will understand this however uh, uh, basically how many vehicles were destroyed how many people got injured that dimension is not important but the conceptual aspect is important we will take that leg up for all tongues no hindi imposition sha so basically guys here it has been provided by the home minister that we are not specifically uh, giving preference to hindi all the mother tongues regional languages we want to promote that that is something that has been given nothing much important for the examination guys moving on After that, Jay Shankar discusses LAC with Queen Hall talks with Lavrov but not Bhutto. So basically, guys, understand this thing right now. SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, is being chaired by India, and SCO summit for this year will also be held in India. And as part of this SCO, SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, India is hosting the dignitaries from the other countries, other SCO countries. So what actually has happened? Just yesterday. there is the sco foreign ministers meet that have started in the goa there the indian foreign minister have met with his chinese counterparts where they are discussing that how the confrontations on line of actual control which are going on since 2020 should be reduced so they have discussed on that particular thing okay uh, the pakistan foreign minister has also come fine now all these particular things actually have been there that on bilateral front on through friendly discussions these lac issues needed to be resolved today also there will be one session that will be held okay then further moving on stop caste survey immediately high court tells bihar government so right now the bihar government is carrying the caste survey though there were earlier demands of a caste census on an entire country level that were made by regional political parties but the center government refused that we are not going to have a caste census for the entire country so now bihar government they have started the caste survey within their own state but then there are some people who have who have uh, petitioned in the patna high court that this is wrong thing because here the money from the contingency fund is being used the government cannot do that moreover you are collecting the data what about the privacy so therefore patna high court has put a kind of a hold that government should not carry with this census forward and all the data should be preserved as of now okay that is all guys about it uh, however uh, you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular election but the caste census demands have been made from past uh, last two years by the political parties because they say that we need to know actually how many people from different different caste backward caste are there so that we can better de design the welfare policies for them then further moving on supriya sule front as ncp panel not important article then guys in city section we see that again uh, we see that the uh, protest by the wrestlers is going on against the sexual harassment that was carried okay that is going on then we have the regional political issues etc that are there okay then advertisements okay again political articles largely have been given fine we will moving on spotlight gangs of delhi okay then uh, metro plus article uh, so nothing important is contained here with respect to the examination so guys we will skip it and directly will come to the editorial page on editorial page the first article and another airline bites the dust so recently here we see that uh, uh, go first has declared that they are ceasing their operations so with respect to the aviation industry this article has come we'll take it then the uh, a boost for science a wider window to the universe this article talks about the lego project of india we'll take this article also then this particular article guys now this article uh, basically talking about the pmi business activity index fine so uh, basically the pmi index pmi readings for the service sector all these things have been provided now i've told you I've, I've many number of times that month by month pmi purchasing manager index data export import data okay uh, foreign Uh, currency reserves where they are going up going down every month such 
thing is not important. Why? Because very simple logic by the time you will write your exam many such uh, new data will come and that this data will become redundant. Okay. Then further moving on here uh, strategic timeout. The convicts in the Bilkis Bano case are using delay as an end. Okay. Uh, now guys uh, this Bilkis Bano rape case the convicts were released uh, uh, basically a couple of months back. Now basically whether this particular re release was morally permissible, legally permissible, that particular issue is going on. Then further moving on, do CCTV cameras protect us or invade us? We'll take this article. Then further moving on, uh, the difference between a podcast interview and a media interview. So this is a notebook article where the journalist gives their some of their own views. Okay, uh, the difference between a podcast and a media interview, not very much important for the examination. So no need to go too much here. Then coming to talk text and context, Washington declaration, we'll see this article. Then uh, what is behind Manipur's widespread unrest, we'll see this article also. Then changing the way we experience games, the rise of sports do documentaries. So guys, uh, many of the many of the OTT platforms and many of the uh, documentaries are now being made on the lives of the sportsmen that how they have, have their risen from rags to riches. Many cliches are there, many uh, often there are many of the controversies, many rumors are there. So all these particular things are being uh, explained in these documentaries that are going on. But for examination, nothing uh, is much important here. So no need to go too much in detail in this article. Then further moving on, SEO ministers meet today to discuss economic ties. So guys, I've told you just when we were discussing the first page overview that one more session of the SEO foreign ministers meet will happen today where they will discuss the economic ties. Now understand this thing. Right now, please don't read this particular article. Why? Because they are just saying that they might discuss that, they might do that. Okay, so today it will happen. So in tomorrow's newspaper, if some substantial thing will come, then we need to see. Moreover, guys, understand this particular thing. You are not even required every statement that is being given. See, suppose SEO foreign ministers meet has happened. Okay, only if some important initiative has been taken, some important uh, declaration has been given, some important uh, joint initiative, bilateral initiative is taken, that is something you need to see. Otherwise, they are talking that, okay, we need to resolve this issue, we need to tackle that issue. These things are going on and essentially, they don't make much of importance for our examination. So simply the summit has happened and you have to track every development, not important, only if some important and meaningful thing is coming out, that is important which you can use. Otherwise, no need to waste your time. Then further moving on here, uh, Rashtriya Sevika Samiti might conduct LGBTQ survey, higher PF pension 1.16% to be taken from employees. Okay, how much will be taken in EPFO, how much will be given, how interest rate will be calculated, all these things not at all important for exam guys. Please don't go there. Then further moving on, uh, after that again, the regional issues etc are going on, fine. Political article, no need to go here in this particular direction. Families flee home, take shelter in relief camp. So article talks about recent Manipur issue that actually happened, we'll take that. Karnataka poll page 2023, nothing is important here. Please guys skip this entire page, the political article. Russia blames USA for a drone hit, White House denies role. So Russia-Ukraine war is going on, but at the side by side, along with the Russia-Ukraine war, there's a proxy war going on between the Russia and the USA also. Where Russia says that the USA has a vested interest and USA says that Russia is doing a kind of, is committing a kind of an act of aggression terror when it has attained the Ukraine. So a counter drone attacks, all these things, they keep on going. Fine, uh, we don't have much article here, then these advertisement standards are there. India, Russia set to suspend talks to settle trade in rupees. We'll see this particular article, for example. Then we have the corporate trends, not important, not important. Uh, CBDC can ease cross-border payments. So what is CBDC? CBDC is the centrally banked digital currency. It is a digital version of the physical currency rupee that we have. And obviously, as it will be held digitally, so cross-border transactions, payments, can be made easily by this CBDC. Okay, then we have the sports page. Okay, so this is guys the overview of entire newspaper. Now let's discuss all the relevant articles one by one in detail. Okay, and I was telling you that you can download these explainer notes from the telegram. Now, every class we start with the GS quotation. Today we'll take the quotation from Nelson Mandela. So Nelson Mandela says, poverty is not an accident. Poverty is not an accident. It is not which is entirely made by the nature, okay, it is not entirely which has been, uh, that has just emerged out of unforeseen circumstances, it is not an accident. Like slavery and apartheid, 
it is a man made and can be removed by the actions of the human beings now understand this thing it's not the case that a person is poor because that particular person didn't had a skill didn't had the talent okay it is not the case poverty economic deprivation is because of the factors that there is an unequal system that is existing which is giving disproportionate to some people and at the same time even the meaningful opportunities are not being given to other people so poverty is not accidental it is not natural it is man made because opportunities have been distribu distributed differentially there are the vested interest okay some people simply because they were at the right place at the right time they are enjoying all the uh, privileges okay so poverty is not an accident it is man made and it can be tackled by the social justice measures fine right? you can use this particular article for gs paper number 1 gs paper number 2 in both of our papers poverty has been mentioned then now taking up the first article for the today guys so the first article actually we have clubbed here the two articles one from the page number 1 uh, the manipur clashes and other is from the text and the context page what is behind manipur's widespread in unrest so we will understand why this particular issue is going on and actually this riot that has happened now it is a manifestation of a long pending crisis that was there now this particular article we will see with respect to gs paper number 2 gs paper number 1 issues emerging out of diversity issues emerging out of diversity and gs paper number 3 issues related to the internal security okay fine gs paper number 2 also we can take this particular article now let's understand this particular article from the very scratch now guys when we talk about this particular issue first of all you need to understand the basic uh, demographics all uh, demographic and geographical setting of manipur now when we talk about the manipur manipur state has been compared with a football stadium now when we talk about a football stadium we see that on all the sides there are the seats for the spectators there is the pavilion and in between there is a ground for football there is a ground there is a turf so when we talk about manipur on all the sides manipur is surrounded by the hills and between that there is the imphal valley so imphal valley is there and on all the sides there are the hills and here so we find this particular thing that the valley of manipur it comprises around 10% of the manipur's land mass and the hill region in manipur it comprises around 90% of the geographical area of manipur so hills 90% area of manipur uh, valley 10% area of the manipur but in this particular valley large number of population actually lives now when we talk about the manipur that people in manipur can be broadly divided in two big groups number one there are the methi people now these methis they have been called as largely they have been defined as the non tribal people and the methis they have large proportion of population so around 65% of the population of manipur it is made by the methi people so 64% roughly 65% population is made by them they also have a lot of political seats for example it is being said that out of the 60 mlas that the manipur is having 40 mlas come from the methis so politically dominant class in terms of population they have 65% of the population then it is said that these methis largely they stay in the valley region then when we talk about the hill region hill region comprises 90% of the geographical region and here there are 35% of the people who are living and these 35% people are largely the tribal peoples of manipur and these people have just 20 mlas in the assembly so 35% people having 20 mlas 65% people having 40 mlas okay now it is being said that when we talk about the methi people methi people are largely many of majority of them are the hindus and they also follow okay sanamahism sanamahism okay now the issue that is coming here is that guys in the last few years methis fine who are the majority they have demanded that they should be given the scheduled tribe status they have raised this particular demand with the government also they have even reached to the manipur high court and they are demanding that right now they are not recognized as the as a scheduled tribe they should be recognized as scheduled tribes and even it has been said that the when the methis are concerned before before 
1949 they were uh, uh, recognized as a scheduled tribe and they need this status of scheduled tribe because they want to preserve their ancestral land they want to preserve their tradition culture language okay so therefore they need the st status so methis are demanding st status now because the methis are demanding this st status and even some of the time political parties have given a kind of an indirect hint that the st status will be given to the methis so the other tribal people that i have told you who majorly are living in the hill region and uh, uh, who make around 35% of the population they don't like this kind of thing they say that methis they have a demographic advantage 65% people are the methis they have a kind of a political advantage i told you that out of the 60 mlas 40 40 of them are from the methis so they say that and at the same time they are also advanced and academically well to do when compared with the tribal people so because they are academically advanced they are having a political uh, 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 majority okay they also have rich demographic number 65% people are methis there is no need to give them the st status moreover it is being said that if st status will be given to the methis then the other tribal people will lose the job opportunities because they are far less advanced when compared to the methis methis will get much more advantage moreover what actually has happened all tribal student union of manipur all tribal student union of manipur they have also provided that the methi people's language that is the methi is also included into the 8th schedule of the indian constitution and already methis are getting the benefits associated with the scheduled caste obc or ews status so st status demand of methis should not be met because it will then put the other tribal at disadvantage when compared to the methis because methis are already very much advanced and against this particular thing there was recently a rally that was carried in manipur okay against this particular move to include methis into the st list there was a rally going on now as this particular rally was going on there were kind of um, a violence that uh, uh, violence that started in this particular rally because of this particular thing lot of property was damaged people got injured fine some lives have also been lost and because of that particular thing shoot at sight order in extreme cases have been issued by the government there so this is the reason behind this particular entire issue so that is all guys about this particular article now understand one more thing guys that uh, beyond this you are not required to go you are not to require that on which date they reach to the high court then what happened on that thing fine this is about this entire issue now moving to the next article on the washington declaration on the washington declaration now this particular article will see with respect to gs paper number 2 issues related to the international affairs okay now before going in this particular article let me explain you guys some of the basic informations that we have so basically guys when we talk about the korean peninsula so korean peninsula largely is divided between two countries that is the north korea and south korea when we talk about the north korea north korea happens to be a military dictatorship a military authoritarian regime is there into the north korea and south korea is a democratic nation now north korea it is being said that it is more inclined towards the side of china and south korea is inclined towards the side of the usa now in 1953 in 1953 uh, see uh, in 1950s there was a war that got started between the north korea and the south korea and in 1953 the armistice was signed between north korea and south korea armistice means that when a war is going on during the war a break is taken that is called as the armistice now if i tell you technically north korea and south korea are still at war why because there that armistice was signed in 1953 peace agreement has never been signed between the north korea and south korea now south korea always says that north korea might attack the south korea north korea might attack the south korea and in the past few years we have seen that the north korea has also developed very sophisticated missiles recently they also have tested their intercontinental ballistic missiles which can which has a such a long range that even it can reach the cities in the america so south korea fears the north korea's invasion now recently guys what actually has happened both the usa and south korea they started their diplomatic relation in 1953 and now what actually has happened 70 years now what has happened 70 years of the diplomatic relation of the north south korea sorry 70 years of the diplomatic relation of the south korea and the usa have been observed and on this particular occasion 
on this occasion the president of the south korea visited usa and there usa and south korea have signed washington declaration they have signed this washington declaration and this washington declaration will provide the nuclear deterrence will provide the nuclear deterrence to the north korea now let's understand what is this washington De declaration all about so basically under this washington declaration there are certain key points that have been agreed by south korea and usa let's understand these key points number 1 number 1 there will be american nuclear ballistic submarine that will be deployed in the korean peninsula okay so there will be a submarine that will be deployed around the korean peninsula and that particular submarine will be the nuclear capable submarine it will be equipped to carry the nuclear attack against the north korea if north korea is trying to attack south korea or is doing any such kind of an adventurism number 1 number 2 there will be this nuclear consultative group that will be formed to formulate the joint response tactic nuclear consultative group fine here the us will be there south korea will be there and it will take decision with respect to any nuclear attack anything if it is to be carried against the north korea then south korea will also receive the intelligence from the usa about the north korea what they are planning and all such kind of a things then after that particular thing uh, the usa will also strengthen south korea's nuclear deterrence capabilities fine now as of now south korea is not having their nuclear missiles so usa will help them by will give them deterrence capabilities joint military training program between the us and south korea will also be there then after that this particular washington declaration has also reformed the non proliferation treaty non proliferation treaty now non proliferation treaty is a treaty which provides that the countries now see the non proliferation treaty divides the countries as nuclear nations and non nuclear nations now non nuclear nations they should not be given any nuclear weapon they should not develop their own nuclear weapon now south korea is a non nuclear nation and here it has been provided by this washington declaration that we uphold the non proliferation treaty usa will not give any missiles to south korea will not give any nuclear weapons to south korea but rather usa will have its own weapons and will use against north korea if north korea is any facing us when will use against the north korea if south korea is having any danger from the north korea okay implying that south korea would not venture into creation of its own independent nuclear capabilities and would focus on deterrence through the usa's usa's nuclear weapons fine so these are all the key points of this washington declaration now guys when we talk about this washington declaration now washington declaration shows this particular thing that the politics of deterrence usa is trying to play here in the korean peninsula now understand this particular thing that below before the 1990s when the cold war was going on at that point of a time usa had deployed many of the nuclear weapons in the south korea but after 1990s they started to uh, re, uh, they, they started to uh, demo, uh, this, they started to dismantle their nuclear weapons from south korea why because after 1990 1991 to we have saw that the soviet union got collapsed moreover usa also signed this strategic arm reduction treaty and as the part of the strategic arm reduction treaty usa has to dismantle their nuclear weapons nuclear missiles which they have deployed in many other countries moreover usa also had a faith that if us will dismantle the weapons from the south korea north korea will also start reducing their weapon development program so this was an expectation in the usa and usa dismantled their nuclear weapons from south korea but now usa is saying that it was a kind of an erroneous assumption it was a mistake because north korea has still continued to produce higher and sophisticated kind of weapons it has not stopped the north korea so it was a mistake by usa which they committed in uh, 1990s and now nuclear posture review of 2022 has been carried and usa is again reconsidering its nuclear policies with respect to the korean peninsula and therefore now usa will again be helping the south korea to deploy the deploy the nuclear weapons here moreover usa also wants to control the global nuclear arm production and therefore it is not giving it is not allowing south korea to develop their own weapons rather usa will provide help to them so this is guys this entire issue about the washington declaration now obviously china has not liked it why because china and north korea are ideologically aligned and china had said that usa deliberately is entering into the korean peninsula and is trying to disturb the peace but usa says that no we are trying to bring the peace
So this is that has ha happened in this particular article. Now moving to the next article. And another airline bites the dust. Now this particular article guys will see with respect to the GS paper number 3. Infrastructure and within infrastructure civil aviation sector of India. Civil aviation sector of India. Okay. Now actually guys when we talk about the article. Article actually has been written in a very kind of a generalistic kind of tone where they are saying that actually India as a civil aviation sector is not in very good health and the Ministry of Civil Aviation, DGCA, Directorate General of Civil Aviation has not done much. So you might have read already in the news that what actually has happened recently the go first, okay go first. They have declared that they are seizing their operation, they are suspending their operation. Now when we talk about the go air, it is India's low cost airline okay and it has also filed for the insolvency under the national company law tribunal fine it has said that we are becoming bankrupt we want to declare our insolvency and they have approached the national company law tribunal now it will liquidate its assets and by liquidating its asset it will settle the dues pending payment to old employees and all of them now when we talk about India guys, we have seen that earlier many airlines have failed. For example, Kingfisher failed, Jet Airways failed and when they failed, their employees were not paid the salaries for so many of the months and in the same case, even though go first, employees dues are pending. Okay, but at the same time when we see the honours, the, the, when we talk about the honours of the Jet Airway, Kingfisher, they are still living their luxurious life. Okay, but the, the workers, the employees, they are suffering. They have not been given their salaries for so many of the months. Now, the article is talking about this particular thing that actually there is a problem in India as a civil aviation sector uh, that often financial health of these airlines are not good from a very long period of time. But Ministry of Civil Aviation don't look in that matter. DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation don't look in this matter when there are the initial red flags that are being shown. So it is being said that when we talk about India, on one hand we say that India has the fastest growing aviation sector. But at the same time there are so much of deficiencies, safety issues. So last year you might have seen that there are so many of the accidents that happened into the aircraft. Uh, fortunately, no accident was serious enough and fatalities etc or such a big crash did not happen but while the planes were flying there were many of the small minor incidents that happened so safety issues are there then many of the aircraft they air flies they have issue of financial security but dgc is not making any kind of regular checks or audits to ensure that such kind of things don't come now the article says that when the covid 19 pandemic came so COVID-19 pandemic was a very big disastrous event for the airlines and all the airlines went in deep red profits. Okay. And at that point of a time, even the airlines in order to save the cost, they suspended the training of the pilots, safety trainings, drills, all of majority of these things were stopped. But DGC has even not done the audit. Moreover, from the past so many of the months, the financial health of many of the airlines was not good. Even the Go Air's financial health was not good. And the companies who had given the planes to them on lease, they are taking back their aircrafts. Okay, they are not able to uh, pay the fuel charges. They were not able to pay the airport charges. But where the DGCA, Minister of Civil Aviation were at that point of a time. So, the article is saying that urgently we need to revamp the aviation policy with respect to India. We need to revamp the aviation policy with respect to the India. It says that we need to have transparency, accountability within the aviation sector. Their audits of safety audits need to be done regularly. The financial audits need to be done regularly. The owners and the promoters, they should be held accountable if there is a failure of the airline that actually happens. Moreover, it is also being said that there is a need to bring some reforms. For example, enforce a ban on any official of a failed airline from holding managerial position in other airline. So, if a person, let's say a, a official of Kingfisher, Kingfisher is a failed airline, they cannot hold managerial position in other airline. It will bring a kind of an accountability. Okay, then airline should also be asked to have a corpus fund. There should be a reserved fund that airline needs to keep separate. So that if it fails from that fund, the salaries to the employees can be given. Now, the sudden announcement by the go first that they are uh, suspending their operations, it was a very sudden kind of an announcement. Okay, and what about the employees? It was like demonetization that suddenly such announcement was done. So such kind of sudden incidents obviously are not good for the aviation industry of sector of India. Fine. Now moving to the next article. 
a boost for science, a wider window to the universe. Now guys, uh, this particular article we'll see with respect to the GS paper number 3. GS paper number 3 as well as the prelims, science and tech. Science and tech. Now what this particular article is talking about? Guys, this particular article is actually, it is actually celebrating or appreciating the India-USA partnership onto the science that is for the LIGO experiment. That is for the LIGO experiment. Okay. LIGO. Now, uh, first of all guys, let's understand that what is this LIGO and then we'll go in this particular article. So, LIGO stands for Laser, Inf uh, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Okay, LIGO. Now, what is this LIGO? It is a large scale physics experiment. It is a large scale physics experiment which is designed to observe the gravitational waves. Now, understand this particular thing guys, that in our universe, there are big celestial bodies that often collide with each other. For example, two black holes. Now, what is a black hole? Black hole, okay. Black hole is created when a star collides under its own gravity at the end of their life, okay, and a black hole will be formed. So, black hole are the zones of immense gravity. There is so much gravity in the black holes that even the light cannot escape from that. So, these immense zones of gravity, black holes, sometimes these black holes, two black holes will collide with each other. And when they will collide, there will be, so uh, when there uh, uh, will be colliding, there will be the gravitational waves that will be emitted out of it. So, basically, guys understand this thing it is said that when we talk about the space and time so there is a theory of space and time fabric so when we talk about the space see space as a kind of a paper clo uh, as, a, as a kind of a cloth sheet space as a cloth sheet so when these kind of big black holes are colliding towards each other there is a ripple that is created there is a sudden squeezing of this space time fabric and that particular thing can be observed now understand this thing there are the black holes that are colliding millions and millions of light years away from the earth and these gravitational waves will reach earth after many many years. They will reach many many millions and millions of years and we need to track these gravitational waves and for that this LIGO uh, experiment, LIGO observatory is designed. Now when we talk about the LIGO observatory guys, right now the, there are the two LIGO observatories two LIGO observatories. Now, what are these LIGO observatories? Basically, guys, these are kind of L-shaped kind of structure. Okay. So, uh, basically, L-shaped kind of structure where, now, now understand this particular thing. Suppose, when the gravitational wave is passing through the earth, when the gravitational wave is passing through the earth, I told you, there will be the squeezing of the space. There will be a squeezing of the space-time fabric. So, there if any minor change is coming, this particular change will be will be tracked by this particular LIGO observatory, which is a kind of a L-shaped kind of a observatory. Okay, so these two arms, they are approximately 4 kilometers each. So, they will track that particular thing. So, right now, we have two LIGO observatories. One is in Hanford, Washington. Other is in the Livingston, Louisiana, both in the USA and now USA is opening third observatory in India that is the Hingoli Maharashtra, Hingoli Maharashtra. So, this third LIGO observatory is being opened in India and this shows the cooperation between the USA and the India. So, United States National Foundation, top US universities, Raja Raman Center for uh, Advanced Technology, okay, what they are doing, they are coming together and launching this LIGO India. Now, when we talk about guys, the astronomy, till now the astronomy was focused on observing light, electromagnetic spectrum, radio waves, infrared waves, but now the gravitational waves are also being tracked. Now, already guys, as I told you that there are the two LIGO projects in USA. So, in 2015, these LIGO projects have observed the gravitational wave for the first time. And these gravitational waves emanated from merging of two black holes 1.3 million light years away from the earth. So, now they have been observed, okay. So, this is a kind, actually a kind of a very breathtaking discovery, okay. And now, in India also, this LIGO observatory is being opened up. And this particular thing shows that how India is advancing in the astronomical operations. It shows the prowess of India in the science. Fine. So, this is all largely about this particular article. Beyond that, guys, nothing relevant is there in this article. That is all about it. Now, moving to the next article. Two CCTV cameras, 
do CCTV cameras protect us or invade our privacy? So we will see this particular article with respect to the GS paper number two issues related to the privacy, right to privacy. Now the article actually is talking about that they see that today what is actually happening? There are at every place CCTV cameras that are being deployed and they say that the CCTV camera reduce crime, okay, and all these kind of a things. And recently, the Lok Niti CSDS, Lok Niti CSDS has carried a survey in 2022 and asked the people that are you comfortable with the idea that the CCTV is being deployed on your entrance or in your neighborhood. And here it was provided that, here it was provided that the three-fourths of the respondents, they supported the idea of installing CCTV camera at the entrance of their home. They believed that CCTV cameras will reduce the crime and will help the police in fighting the criminals and to nab the criminals. Now, when we talk about the CCTV cameras, so on uh, the CCTV cameras, they are claimed that they reduce the crime, but there are the studies that have been carried in UK and US and this, sorry, UK. And the studies in UK, UK shows that there is actually no connection between CCTV cameras and reduction of the crime. Okay, uh, because understand this thing that main number of times those CCTV camera captures the footage, but the footage is not clear. Sometimes CCTV camera is not working. Sometimes even if you have the footage, you cannot catch that particular person. Now, in the context of India, there was a controller auditor general or controller auditor general of India's audit, CAG audit that was done in 2018-19. Okay, controller auditor general's audit 2018-19. Now, this audit provided that 55 to 68 percent cameras in Delhi CCTV cameras they are not working. Okay, they don't often work. So, because of this particular thing, the reliance on CCTV is misplaced. Moreover, it is also being said that as we have become over relied on the CCTV, okay, main number of a times the case becomes unsolvable if there is no CCTV footage. Moreover, CCTV footages also give the false negative and false positive. False positive means grabbing or nabbing a wrong person or false negative means that basically because we don't have a clear footage, we can't identify a person and that person was actually a criminal. We let it go. Why? Because clear picture was not there in CCTV. So false negative and false positive. Moreover, when the CCTV is being deployed, there is so much of footage that is being collected. But what about the data collection, data processing, data storage, how when the data is to be deleted, we don't have any law in this particular direction. So that footage when it to be deleted, it no such kind of a thing. Facial recognition is being done through the CCTVs, no law to regulate that facial uh, recognition. Now, Criminal Procedure Act allows the police and authorities to collect the fingerprints, to collect the voice detection, to collect the videos, etc. But law with respect to uh, law with respect to handling of that particular data footage is not there. Now, when we talk about the New York and London Police Department, they have an oversight committee to ensure that there is no violation of civil rights. When the video is being captured, violation of civil rights should not be there. But in India, we don't have such kind of an elaborate laws. Moreover, to use CCTV evidence, there are conditions which have been laid out under the Indian Evidence Act. So, a certificate has to be obtained if a CCTV footage is to be used in the court of law. Okay, but that particular process is very much, very much tedious, very much lengthy. Okay, all these particular things are there. So, point that the article is saying is that though we use CCTV and believing that CCTV will help in reducing the crime and all such kind of things, but actually is it that helpful? No. This is being provided by the article. Now moving to the next article. India Russia, India Russia set to suspend talks to settle trade in rupee. Now guys, just uh, I think day before yesterday, we have discussed the article on a de-dollarization, where we have seen this particular thing that now what is happening, countries are trying to reduce the hegemony of dollar. The countries, they are trading in their own domestic currencies so that they don't use dollar. Why? Because USA, has often tried to carry the weaponization of dollar. Okay, so Russia, so many countries are trading with the Russia, but when they use dollar, US has said that no, you cannot use dollar because we have imposed sanctions on Russia. Okay, so countries are go moving towards carrying the trades in their domestic currencies. And in the context of Russia and India also, both the countries have started the rupee ruble arrangement where when India is importing the oil from Russia, India will not pay dollar, rather India will pay rupee to the Russia and Russia can use the same rupee while Russia is importing some item from the India. So, the rupee ruble arrangement was signed between India. But now the Russia had said that we need to suspend this 
rupee ruble arrangement we need to suspend this particular thing why because understand this particular thing india imports a lot of oil from russia and there is a deficit balance between there is a trade deficit between the russia and india india is importing lot more oil from russia okay and actually the last year 2022 india uh, russia became the largest crude oil supplier to india and india in turn had paid the rupee now russia is having a lot of rupee russia is having a lot of rupee currency so have a they have a rupee currency of around 40 billion dollar around 40 billion dollar in rupee they have because india has given this particular rupee when they imported the oil now russia is not finding a way that where they will use this particular rupee why because guys the acceptance of rupee as a currency in international scale is not that much so most of the countries are not ready to accept rupee and they cannot use it with the india also because from india they are not importing that much items which they are actually exporting to india so russia has suspended this particular thing to right now so india russia said to suspend talks to settle the trade in rupee okay so this is guys now it is going to be a major setbacks to importers because we used to import a lot of oil okay so this is guys all about this particular issue and now moving to the next article okay uh, sorry uh, the main practice question for the today so main practice question for today it reads there is no law which regulates how the data is collected, how the data is collected, processed, stored, when it should be deleted or with whom it can be shared. In this context, analyze the Digital Personal Data Protection Bill. So this will be the question with respect to the GS paper number 2, 10 marker question. That is all guys for today. And with this, we come to an end to the today's newspaper session. That is all guys. I hope that you have liked the video and you have understood it.